Welcome back. You're watching Morning Live. It's the big countdown to the Rugby World Cup. The opening ceremony in Twickenham and Air London tonight. It is going to kick off at quarter to seven and it promises to be a humdinger. South Africa goes up against Japan tomorrow. But Ayanda Ali Payne is doing the job for us. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's called the Nene. That's what I think it's called. Let's cross to Ayanda Ali Payne who's doing the job for us. Good morning, Ayanda. Let's do this. This is why we had to go outside the studio and be on the lawns of the Auckland Park premises of the SABC because the studio, Sam, was just too small to contain all the excitement and jubilation of the super fans doing the Boca Jive. As you can see there, even the Nene is part of the mix. Yesterday uh, is the official start of the 2015 Rugby World Cup. The opening match will see England take on Fiji and uh, Twickenham. But we're more concerned about what's going to be happening on Saturday. I know you are as well, Sam. Japan taking off uh, course at the uh, box. And uh, there's a lot of debate about the starting team there, Heineken Mayer's guys, whether or not there are experience, as they've been said, the most experienced team with over 880 caps combined, or whether or not they're just old. Let's get some analysis and now. I'm joined by uh, former Springbok uh, Bulls and Rikos Loose Forward. Uh, it is uh, Tando Manana. Did I get that right? Tando, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, you did certainly, Ayanda. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm one of those fair weather fans, you know, that only crawl out of the woodwork during a soccer World Cup or rugby World Cup. So it's quite interesting for me to actually dig deep into what's happening now in the sport. Let's talk about that starting team. Yeah, look, certainly I think it's an experimental side that has been selected by the coach. I think uh, for the reason that you don't see Thor, which is Dwayne Vermeerling, not being in the side, it means that there's concern about his neck injury. But also you look at Zane Kirchner, maybe because he performed so admirably so well against Argentina in Buenos Aires that, uh, you know, may have felt that they need a backup fullback. You know, remember Valile is the incumbent fullback, but he finds himself out of the match 23 playing. But also what's so exciting and also interesting is to see Jean de Villiers back. He was touted to come back just after the Samoan game, but he finds himself starting against Japan. Now it means that maybe preparations are heavy underway against a game like Samoa which will meet up next as well as Scotland. And I'm always saying that the Minos have done exceptionally well and thanks to IRB for speeding up the process and making sure that they got enough sort of cash injection in their union to sort of just lift up their performances in terms of the game. So we'll have a tough one again. Remember Samoa, they we managed to beat them 11-9 in, in New Zealand 2011. But the Japanese, let me say one thing about them. They played France in 2011 and for the full hour you know the score the deficit was just five points and then the wheels fell off in the last uh, sort of uh 10, 15 minutes and they lost that game by a huge margin. But also, I think with Eddie Jones, a man who's been to a World Cup final, a man who's also been an assistant technical analyst for South Africa when we won in 2007, he's got a lot to prove and certainly he knows the players and that's why he says that in his uh, sort of press conference, these players are sell passed by their date. Let's talk a little bit now about Japan. Uh, the box have been told to expect quite a fast-paced game. You were saying to me off-air that, that you can control that. What do you think they should be doing? Look, I think firstly, uh, Japanese are aware the, of the physical, uh, you know, uh, ferocious, uh, you know, uh, battle they're going to be up against the Springboks. And I think also Springboks also, they're going to want to take it up front and also try and control the game themselves, especially when it comes to line out where you have the Victor Matfield of this world. I think scrum time is going to be crucial for the box. Every scrum, they're going to want to have a turnover. Turnover, remember, you've got to have a turnover and score points from that turnover. So I think the set phases are so, so crucial, important for the South Africa. Mind you, Japan will also be feeding like scavengers, will also be waiting for South Africa to make those mistakes and that's when the game will sort of become loose and that's where they're quite dangerous. They've got exciting runners and also they've got experienced players that have playing in Super, Super 15, currently the Captain Leach. He was born in New Zealand, moved to Japan when he was only 15 years of age. So he knows and also he understands how the South African play. So I think they've got a good mix and also I think with a lot of players migrating to Japan, it has certainly helped them to sort of start now competing with the bigger 
bigger, bigger countries that are, you know, the force in reckoning in, in, in the rugby world. I'm going to pretend to be a seasoned sports journalist and ask what every sports journalist will ask. Predictions. Throw your bones or your look into your crystal balls or prophesy. What do you uh, anticipate the score to be on Saturday? Look, besides the score, I think what's important is the five, five points, meaning that we have to win with a bonus point. I'm not really worried about uh, points when it comes to tournament time. I think what's important is we have to make sure that we keep most of the countries scoreless or even just protecting our try line. In so doing, we we try and earn as much bonus points as possible in order for us to make sure that we end up top of the group and also we face a runner up in the group of death which is pool A that's going to be critical but also selection wise I think Heineke Meyer has just now got to start bringing in his first 15 I'm sure he'll do that next weekend or the third weekend but certainly time is running out for him he's got to find the right mix time is running out for us as well and you answered like a politician you avoided my question entirely but it's okay I'll let you get away with that one we'll leave it there in, uh, at least for now in just a moment we're going to be talking about uh, the uh, opening match of course against England and Japan we'll take a, a closer look at that did you say with us